You're listening to the Huddle Up Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. Okay, we're live, but we do have to let the stream breathe just for a few moments. Y'all know the drill. We got to bring on Facebook, make sure we're all in this party together, and we're good. Welcome in, everybody, to the Huddle Up podcast, presented, as always, by Mile High Huddle and powered by Overtime Media. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. With me, as always, is my partner in crime, my fellow football priest. You know him. You love him. He is Zach Kelberman. Zach, the Broncos, as you would expect, got blown out by an 8-2 and two Saints team that was going against a undrafted rookie wide receiver playing quarterback. Go. <laughs> can't say i'm surprised by it chad you know the, the final result of the game but listen guys any broncos fan out there looking at the score looking at anything from this it doesn't matter there is going to be the biggest fattest asterisk next to this game for all of eternity this is might as well be an exhibition game this should have never been played philip Lindsay should have never been injured bryce callahan should have never been injured the broncos should have never even been put in this position where they're going into a game on 24 hours notice can't even get a practice in and I have to have a receiver who has played quarterback in four years playing quarterback in an NFL game against a really good Saints team. It's I don't blame Hinton. I don't blame the defense. I don't blame Fangio. I, I blame the NFL and Roger Goodell for putting the Broncos in the situation. Never should have happened. He is the clown to end all clowns, Chad. It's egregious. It is egregious. And the Denver Broncos have a real bone to pick with the NFL. Not that there's really going to be any kind of relief that they can seek from this. I mean, fact is they're now four and seven and that seventh loss basically means that in order for them to even have a shot, a sniff, a snowball's chance in H E double hockey sticks at the playoffs, you got to run the table. And in order to run the table, you got to beat the chiefs again. Uh, you got to beat the chiefs who the second time you're seeing them this year, you have got the chiefs. You got to beat the Raiders. Got to beat the bills. Who else? I'm missing one. Got to beat the, Panthers. Panthers, but there's one more it seems like I'm missing. No, it's five. Either way, that's a tough task. You know, the NFL basically said, look, Broncos, your season's over. We're deeming it over. We're publicly humiliating you. We're making an, an example out of you. And I want to get more into this as, as additional details have come to light. Drew Locke released a statement before the game. I want to get into that here in a minute. Of course, all your comments, your gut reactions, your You know, we'll help you exercise the demons as your football priest as best we can. But also some insight that has come from KOA, from Benjamin Albright, who has seen the footage that's so stuck in the NFL's craw about the quarterbacks and their masks. Did they wear them? Didn't they wear them? Did they obey and honor the uh, protocols, et cetera? We're going to get into that, but you're you're 100% right, Zach. This isn't about, you know, why did the Broncos get blown out? Let's analyze, you know, the performance of this player, that player, this phase, that phase, this coach. No, this was simply an abomination. And the NFL should be ashamed of itself and embarrassed. Roger Goodell be clowned himself. And he could have, he had a chance to do the right thing, dude. This happened in the middle of Saturday afternoon. Because said, look, all right, reschedule for Tuesday. Got to hope your guys, none of them test positive for the virus. Uh, even slap them with a fine, something. But to completely take every quarterback off the table and expect them to play a game. I mean, Zach, The Broncos are lucky this wasn't, you know, 48-3. I mean, 48 nothing. to be honest with you. And and the really sad part of this is, Chad, with Drew Locke, they could have won this game. Not to say they would have won, but they definitely could have won. They were in it for the most part. They let the game get away from them toward the end, but they were waving the white flag. And it's just funny to me when the Fox announcer – and the Fox crew was so biased toward New Orleans, it wasn't even funny. But the Fox announcer mentioned the Broncos were shorthanded. Shorthanded? That's missing a lineman or two. They were it was a full body amputation, Chad. They, they were given no chance. The NFL pretty much said, "Okay, you don't want to follow our rules. We're going to not let you win this game. That's if you don't want to forfeit, we will do everything in our power so you don't win this game." And it's it's all on the NFL. They should actually owe the Broncos an apology for for doing this to them. It's one thing to have Driscoll sit out or maybe Rippin or maybe Locke, but all of them, all of the quarterbacks. 
You don't let the team practice. You have a practice squad receiver playing quarterback in an NFL game. Where is the competitive balance? Where is the integrity of the sport? Is it all pandering now? Is it all money now? It's always been that way, Chad. But when the money is bleeding over into the product, when the obvious... I don't even, the bias, I would say, bleeds over into the NFL's decision making. Roger Goodell should be ashamed of himself. This is one of the worst jobs as a commissioner of any sport that I've seen to allow this to happen. All right. So get this, gang. This is what the NFL wrought. Okay. If, if Roger Goodell is Victor Frankenstein, this is the monster. All right. Here you go. Kendall Hinton went one for nine passing with 13 yards. And two interceptions, and as you can see here, courtesy of ESPN Stats and Info, the Broncos became the first team with more passes intercepted than completions since the Chargers in 1998 against the Chiefs. Ryan Leaf started that game for San Diego. So that was a 22-year precedent that was broken today, and it took the NFL completely abandoning all pretenses of fairness. I mean, we one of the reasons why the NFL is king is because of parity and because of competitiveness. I mean, the old cliche, Zach, any given Sunday. That's because the NFL over the years has done a great job, I would say just really over the last two decades, of balancing the scales and ensuring that every team has a chance to compete. And and in this case, the Broncos were not given a chance to compete. When you take the most important position and eliminate every player who, who plays that position from the board, what do you expect? And so Roger Goodell, Bob John, I don't even know what recourse the Broncos have. There probably isn't any, but this is just a sad stain, not only on on the Broncos, because they do share complicity in this, but the NFL had the chance. This is like, here's an example. It's like, this is like a kid, all right, getting busted, you know, thieving a Laffy Taffy at, at the store, all right? All right, slap on the wrist, 99 times out of 100. Goodell, though, he's the judge, and this time he goes, nope, capital punishment. That's, <laughs> that's how it's not like the, the kid did. He did steal the Laffy Taffy, okay? But the punishment <laughs> doesn't fit the freaking crime. I love that analogy so much. And uh, there's no there's no consistency here. Like we mentioned on the halftime stream, if it was a team like the Ravens, and, and the Ravens, they get their game pushed back twice because they have the superstar quarterback, because they have the name power in Lamar Jackson. Drew Locke doesn't have that luxury. And the sad thing is, not only do they maybe win this game with Locke under center, but why was he forced to sit out? I still want to know. I understand it's protocols, and things are changing every single day, every single week. But if Locke wasn't infected, If he took a test and it came back negative and he was all clear, why couldn't he play in this game today? To punish all four quarterbacks and the entire team for one guy catching CV seems very extreme. And there's different theories as to why. They made an example out of them. They came down harder on them because of the ownership situation. Uh, They were mad about, you know, a recurring situation with the Fangio mask thing back in a few months ago. We don't know the reason, but this was, like you mentioned perfectly, a great analogy Way extreme, way over the top. They weren't even hiding uh, their bias, their intentions with this move, Chad. Guys, there is so much to get to, including your comments, your super chats, whatever it is that we you need to get off your chest. We're going to help you do that, help you exercise some demons as your football priest. But first, we got to take care of a couple of matters of business, including spotlighting tonight's show, which is sponsored this live uh, Huddle Up podcast by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over the technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience, Zach. Yeah, and I'm holding right now, I'm holding the uh, the weed whacker. It's for your nose. When we talked about the lawnmower. We talked about your family jewels and below the bell, and there's a lot of taboo with that. A lot of people like talking about that, especially guys. I'm here to talk to you about something that we can all use. I used this a few days ago. It's great for upkeep. You have little nose hairs. You have ear hairs. It takes two seconds. There's no grab. There's no pull. There's no pain. There's no must. There's no fuss. It has a light. It has a great charge. It gets the job done. Uh, Chad and I both love these, and I use them very regularly. Anyone who wants to do a little trimming, little upkeep, doesn't have to be something you have to invest a lot of money in. doesn't have to be something you have to overthink. Manscaped is truly a good product at a good price. Everybody knows. Every dude has been through that scenario where you get a little too close, right? It's it's a it's an owie when you're trying to do some manscaping. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer, 
engineering team at Manscaped spent 18 months perfecting the greatest trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved, you heard Zach mention it, Lawnmower 3.0. It's their third generation trimmer. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. And when we tell you that this is premium, we mean that it truly is a premium product. The battery lasts up to 90 minutes and you can take it in the shower with you. It's waterproof technology. And one of the coolest features, I'm just going to flash it for a second because you, you hear the buzz, is the LED light, which illuminates those grooming areas for closer, more precise trimming. And they've also upgraded the motor. So, I mean, this thing is, is a workhorse. It's a powerhouse. And we also don't want to forget the charging stand. You can show that, mo- that mower off loud and proud because of the intelligently designed stand making a convenient charging dock powered by USB. So if you're listening to us right now, we want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Trim it up below the waist, man. And also above the neck with the Weed Whacker right now, thanks to Black Friday and Cyber Monday, you can get 25% off and free shipping at manscaped.com, but you got to use the code HUDDLE. Your family jewels will thank you, Zach. Yes, Brock West Country, listen up. Get 25% off and free shipping with the code HUDDLE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 25% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code HUDDLE. Great holiday present. Christmas right around the corner. Get you one. All right, guys, a few more things here, and then we'll dive right back into the stream. Just a quick reminder, follow us on Twitter, the pod, at HuddleUpPod. Also, the main account, at Mile High Huddle. My partner, Zach Kelberman, at Kelberman NFL. Myself, at Chad and Jensen. And then uh, also, if you're if you're in a position, gang, gentle reminder with the holidays coming up, check out the merch store. Head on over to huddleuppod.com. Get your swag on, get a hat, get a T-shirt, get an MHH face mask, hoodies, little something for everybody. And also to our Facebook community, if you'd like to consider becoming an official supporter, it's another way you can support what we're doing here at MHH. Just go to facebook.com slash milehighhuddle, our main page. You'll see the big blue button. Boom, you're in like Flynn. We really appreciate all of our Facebook supporters. It's like being a super chat superstar, but on Facebook. And if you're not in a position to do those things, it's all good. We're just happy to have you here in the stream with us. Thank you for listening to us live or after the fact as an on-demand podcast. But we do ask each and every person to do these three things, which are in your power. Subscribe, first and foremost, especially if you're on YouTube or Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or iHeart, Spotify. Like this video, crucial on YouTube, crucial on Facebook. And then the litmus test is number three. If Zach and I are doing a good job, share this out there. Help us continue to grow. And we are growing exponentially and reach new like-minded Broncos fans just like you. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. Broncos country, that was rough. But we got something here to brighten your day. Coors Hard Seltzer is not your average seltzer. Rooted in Coors' long history of sustainability, is a brand inspired by a generation that wants to do good in the world with a mission to restore America's rivers. Never before has it been so easy to make a difference, to make an impact. Coors Heart Seltzer is launching the world's easiest volunteer program. Whatever you're doing, by simply cracking open a can of Coors Heart Seltzer, you're volunteering because our waterways are at risk. 80% of America's rivers are drying up. Through a partnership with Change the Course, Coors Hard Seltzer is helping to protect and restore America's rivers. Each 12-pack of Coors Hard Seltzer restores 500 gallons of fresh water to U.S. rivers and the communities that depend on them. The results? 1 billion, that's with a B, you guys, gallons of water restored to 16 river basins across the U.S., including the Colorado River. And that's just year one. You get four refreshing flavors, one cool cause, Enjoy naturally flavored black cherry, mango, lemon lime, and grapefruit. And the specs are in, gang. Coors Hard Seltzer is 4.5% ABV and only 90 calories. Chad, after the NFL did the Broncos dirty against the Saints, I'm so happy I have my black cherry Coors Hard Seltzer to lean back on. It's my favorite flavor. It always lightens my mood. It's the crisp, refreshing taste that I look for, and I'm so happy to have it on this football Sunday. Amen. So join the world's easiest volunteer program. By simply drinking Coors Hard Seltzer, you can volunteer to restore America's rivers. You buy Coors Hard Seltzer, you help restore 500 gallons of water into America's rivers. It is that simple. Visit CoorsSeltzer.com to find a Coors Hard Seltzer near you. That's CoorsSeltzer.com. For every 12-pack sold through 831-2021, Coors will purchase services from Change the Course to restore 500 gallons of fresh river water. Details at CoorsSeltzer.com. 
Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. All right, John. I want to get to a few things, but let's. We've had some super chat superstars waiting patiently. We got Chris Hernandez. And if you guys notice, this 24 year veteran of the Air Force and superstar in the MHH community, his, when he does graciously super chat after a game on a gut reaction, it's always symbolic. In this case, you can see why. The Broncos scored three points. And honestly, Zach, it was a miracle that the Broncos even got three points. Brandon McManus boots through a 58-yarder and becomes the single-season record holder for the Denver Broncos for the most field goals from 50-plus yards. Um, Congrats to McManus for that. Chris says, the NFL should be ashamed. I hope Lindsey is okay. Zach, I want to get to Drew Locke's statement. Thank you, Chris, here in a second. But he talked about, I just pray that my teammates will, for, for their safety, for obvious reasons. When you go into a game like this, at half math, going against an eight and two team that's red hot, one of the best teams in the NFL, you're really susceptible, Zach, to to the vagaries of the injury bug. And unfortunately, surprise, surprise, the Broncos did not escape the injury bug today. Yeah, it's it sucks for Philip Lindsay. Uh, he had a knee injury. He was ruled out thereafter. That's never a good sign with a quick rule out. But you have to wonder if Fangio is saying, okay, you know, we're not going to win this game. It's a joke. We're not going to risk further injury to our best offensive player for the most part. Uh, he never should have been playing in this game. Though this game never should have happened. Um, I did see though after the fact. I was on Twitter for a second, and Fangio said no update yet on Philip Lindsay or Bryce Callahan. We have to hope there are lower grade injuries, or have to hope they're nothing too severe, because otherwise, Chad, the NFL owes the Broncos an apology for even putting them in the situation where their players could have gotten injured. The joke. Yep. My guess is we won't have an answer on the severity of those two injuries until tomorrow. But you're absolutely right. And let's grab this super from Zach Lee Butler. Appreciate Great you, my friend. He says, kudos to Hinton. Poor kid had no chance. The NFL showed no highlights from the game on their Facebook. The hypocrites knew they shafted fans. Yes, they shafted fans, but they also shafted whoops the team and the players. And frankly, they gift wrapped an an additional victory for the New Orleans Saints. Now, look, (laughs) the Saints were favored to win this. What, five and a half? Might have been six points. According to sportsbetting.com, they were favored to win this game in Denver. But at least this would have been a competitive match if it's Drew Locke out on the field or Brett Rippon or even Blake Bortles at. Oh, let's not go there, Chad. You know, it could have been, though, with Drew Locke. They, the Broncos, again, they play good defense for the most part. They contain Taysom Hill, who, by the way, I am thoroughly unimpressed with. I, the Saints really didn't look that good today for a team that should have just trounced the Broncos with no quarterback. But, again, Vic Fangio's defense did enough. They forced some turnovers. They kept the game mostly within reach. If they had Locke under center, like you said, even a Bortles, anyone that's a natural quarterback, they would have had a chance in this game. It's a joke completely and a travesty for Denver. Logan jumping in. Appreciate that super chat, my friend. He says, I have one thing to say. F the NFL. I blame no one. Well, I mean, okay. I'm not sure what that means. You're saying, you know, NFL pound sand, but I don't blame you. I mean, I don't know. Look, the Broncos share complicity in their situation today. But again, it's a punishment, not meeting the crime type of proposition. This was obviously the Broncos being trotted out into town square, walked up onto the gallows, publicly humiliated in order to make an example of them. Plain and simple. The NFL wants to scare each and every team out there right now in more ways than one into perfect obedience with regard to this new intensive virus protocol. Chad, you know, I don't even care so much about the loss. What really gets my goat here is the fact that Locke lost out on valuable reps through no fault of his own. That's a young quarterback who needs every game, every rep he can get, and he hasn't been get, get, he hasn't gotten a chance that today. For what reason? He wasn't infected. He did nothing wrong. He was punished for a victimless crime, Chad. That's all it was. Shout out to Stu Meat for the super sticker. Really appreciate the donation, my friend. And yes, I think everybody's feeling a little bit R E K T right now, a little bit wrecked. Appreciate you, my dog. Let's grab Christian. Uh, jumping in, one of our longtime listeners and super chat superstars. Appreciate you, Christian. He says, this was probably a message by the NFL that we need to get our ownership situation resolved ASAP. Honestly, I think the lack of clarity at owner factored in on the back end of this, but I really don't think it was the impetus. This wasn't the NFL trying to make an example of the Broncos because of a lack of clarity at ownership. This was the NFL trying to make an example out of the Broncos 
because, and for those of you who missed it, <clears throat> Saturday evening, Lindsey uh, Jones, is it Lindsey Jones of The Athletic? Right, yeah. Lindsey Jones. She broke a story that said that Drew Locke, Brett Rippon, and Blake Bortles, when the NFL, when the Broncos and then the NFL went about their contact tracing investigation and interviews, let's just say were less than forthcoming in terms of, all right, you know, because the whole point was Jeff Driscoll had tested positive Thursday morning at 4 a.m. All right, well, we got to we gotta get a beat on this and do our contact tracing. Let's look at the security footage to see if Drew, Brett, or Blake were within social distance requirements. And if they were, were they wearing their masks? All this stuff is part of the contact tracing program uh, protocol. And this is something even myself with my wife, she works in a school. They have to do this when a kid tests positive or a teacher. They have to look at the security footage and do the contact tracing, add, it, uh, add up the time, et cetera. The Broncos did all that, but throughout the process – According to the athletic, they were not forthcoming. They, the NFL, in other words, perceived that Locke, Rippon, and Bortles, Zach, were deceptive. And that's why you saw a delay. The Broncos were allowed to practice Thursday. Fangio, uh, on his own accord, chose to cancel Friday after Deontay Spencer tested positive. And then on Saturday, as the Broncos are literally trotting out to get started on practice, is when the NFL says, uh uh uh, uh. by the way, pull your quarterbacks off the field. They can't practice, they're going into high risk protocol. And that, that's it. I mean, that's how quickly it came because at that point, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat, the NFL had realized, or in their estimation, they felt like Drew Locke and company had just been a little devious. They hadn't been up front and forthright with their protocol stuff. And turns out they weren't perfectly in obedience in, when it comes to the protocol. And we'll read more about that, Zach. I'll start pulling it up right now. Chad, I just think if if it's about ownership, there's other ways to go about that. Maybe have a private conversation, maybe send a notice to the team, an email, not force every quarterback to be ineligible. And what strikes me is today it came out, I believe, the Patriots were fined, what was it, $300,000 for not complying with CV protocols. Okay, that, they were slapped with a fine, which is, I understand that. They weren't punished, though. In fact, the NFL accommodated them around the Broncos game. Why couldn't the Broncos get the same treatment? Why? Because they don't have Bill Belichick. They don't have Cam Newton. Their players don't matter, Chad. The Broncos players don't matter. The Broncos season doesn't matter. That's why I don't, I don't like. I don't like the double standards. I don't like the hypocrisy. And unfortunately, Roger Goodell has been all about that, going back to Ray Rice and how he's handled domestic violence issues, how he's handled certain parts of the pandemic. Roger Goodell is a certified clown. All right, let me uh, let me get into this really quick here. Uh, Ren, appreciate that. No, it's okay, John. Let's grab Ren real quick. Uh, appreciate the super chat and the support, my friend. He says, that was honestly one of, if not the worst games I've ever watched. The NFL literally screwed us over. Shocker. This would have been postponed if it was Mahomes, Brady, Rodgers, Lamar, or yep. Wilson. Ren, you're 100% correct, my dog. And by the way, if you're on Twitter, Ren, reach out. Make sure we're connected so that we can shout you out after this podcast. Zach, I want to show everybody here some additional information that has come to light over the last couple of hours. And I want to start it here with Benjamin Albright's uh, reporting. Now, Benjamin Albright is one of the – everyone knows Benjamin Albright, especially our the listeners of the Huddle Up podcast. We've had him on the show many times, um, not recently in terms of the live streams, but he's been a guy that we've turned to for insight and info for many moons because he is as plugged in as it gets. While the game was in its final stages this evening, Dave Logan on the KOA broadcast, he said basically that Benjamin Albright has seen the footage of the quarterbacks in question and that they were wearing their masks while in the room, except when they pulled them down to eat after the fact. And then Logan talked about, that's all I'll say. I'll, I'll let Ben you know, take whenever he chooses to to talk about this, to talk about it in his own way. Here's what Ben said on Twitter just a few minutes ago. They shouldn't have lowered their masks to eat and talk. That violates the rules. That said, I've seen the video. They had masks and were socially distant. Anyone who wants to pretend that's bad info is going to look silly. So, of course, as always, you know, Ben is is somewhat battling the trolls there, Zach. But the, the message here is the punishment did not fit the crime. This is a game. I mean, I seriously, I I don't blame fans because even as media, as I've told you guys, this the the, the game in which Drew Locke came back against the Chargers and Justin Herbert, uh, what was that, November 1st or 2nd? That was the first game in a long time where I actually had my adrenaline up and I was like 
fully in it. You know, something about being media and covering the games and getting out content, you just kind of lose your investment somewhat. We still care. We still very much care about how these things unfold. But Zach, I am emotionally invested right now because I cannot dismiss the wrong that the NFL has done to the NFL or to the Denver Broncos on this front. And again, punishment meeting the crime. If a kid steals Laffy Taffy, he's going to get, you know, capital punishment. I don't think so. It's it's like if you, let's say you're in a grocery store and you're walking out with your cart and you lower your mask before you get outside, that you get arrested for that. You get a ticket for that. You get your food taken away. It, so, okay, they're in the cafeteria. They they brought, let's just say they brought their mask down to eat temporarily. First of all, how do you eat with a mask on? That's first of all. <laughs> Second of all, so, okay, let's say they did take the mask down a little bit to put food in and then to put the mask back up. You mean to tell me that's worth making four quarterbacks ineligible for this game? You mean to tell me them taking down the mask temporarily was worth them not having a quarterback to play in this game? Your analogy, Chad, is spot on. There's nothing I can really say to top that because it's totally true. A little kid stealing candy and got hanged for it as a result. Drew Locke then releases a statement, which we're going to get to here in just a second. I want to grab this super from Craig. Go ahead. Let me, let me just say one thing. If the video is as Albright says, the Broncos need to put that out now. They need to get ahead of that story because, you know, he who you know makes the news controls the news. So if the video, if they're innocent in that, they need to put that out and, and, and clear their names and all this, Chad. Fair point. Some that this is a, a war that is now being waged in the court of public opinion. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. Craig Patterson jumping in with a very generous super, one of our longtime listeners as well. Appreciate you, Craig. You. A lot of demons to exercise today. Amen. Hinton did everything he could. Shermer could have done better, but Goodell is a joke. And uh, we'll just say NH5. Jumping in, appreciate you. If 2020 was a game, this was it. Best wishes to Lindsey and Callahan, and we caught an L. This was an absolute travesty, far too costly. And then last thing here uh, from Christian with a super, appreciate that. It says also congrats to you, Chad, on kid number five. Indeed, yes. kid number five on the way, for those of you who missed it. We will do a uh, gender reveal in December, and we're open to suggestions for names. We don't know the, the gender yet till till end of December, as I mentioned. So we'll see, maybe – Maybe Zach it's Jensen. Atwater. I don't know. What's it? Something <laughs> Macquery? Mac? I don't know. Zach, I don't know if I can do the Z. Macquery. I like it. Jeff. Right, right now, I'm it's John different. pointing at John K. John K. <laughs> I see him. Um, Zach, let me just really quick here. I want to get to Drew Locke's statement. Now, this was this came out. This was released, of course, carefully cultivated, I'm sure, by Broncos PR. This came out right before the game. All right. And uh, what was said is the following. Whoops. All right. I'm going to close that. That was weird. I'll just read it. Uh, quote, Zach, this is from Drew himself. As a member, as a proud member of the Denver Broncos, I can attest that our entire team has taken the COVID-19 pandemic seriously, following the rules to keep each other safe. We are tested daily, get quick results, and are confident our facility is a safe environment for everyone in a controlled and socially distanced area. That's key. In a controlled and socially distanced area, we let our masking slip for a limited amount of time. An honest mistake, but one I will own. I sincerely apologize and fully understand why these safety precautions are so important. Doing the right thing for a majority of the time is not good enough. I pray for my teammates' health, safety, and success today. I look forward to getting back on the field next week. Go Broncos. Close quote. Now, Zach, that came out again right before... The Broncos kicked. Do you interpret that to be obviously there's a few reasons in my estimation why they ended up, you know, having Drew Locke release a statement, but do you think that was like a last ditch effort on the part of the Broncos to try and sway the mm-hmm. the league to to reschedule this thing? I thought maybe they figured it can't hurt, you know, if put out a positive statement, maybe maybe it will it will change their minds. But I think that's just PR. I think it's just Locke. If he really did come up with that statement on his own, he wasn't fed that. I, I think it was a good statement by the team's quarterback, the team's leader. Um, I just think they, needed to, they, they had to put a face to the quarterback room. And the face of the quarterback room is Drew Locke. But I want to know something. Wasn't it the fact the NFL initiated that investigation? It wasn't the Broncos. So who in the cafeteria snitched on Denver to get to this situation? I, I want to know how A got to B before A got to C, in other words. 
Honestly, I think it's just simply the security camera footage that's that's in question here because – but even still, I mean, crazy. Like, like, like you said, maybe there are specific protocols. Look, we're not going to lie to you and pretend to be lawyers in terms of knowing every word of the NFL's intensive uh, virus protocol right now. Maybe there is an additional rule that was broken because we say, hey, look, you can't – if you're going to eat, you got to lower the mask to at least you know take your bites and then you put it up while you chew, whatever – but maybe there's rules in place under this intensive COVID protocol, Zach, in which there are that players have to eat in specifically designated areas, et cetera, et cetera. But even still, all of that can be true. There could be one or two violations in this. All right. But Zach, it doesn't get out of the point that the, the NFL jumped the shark here. Uh, DH3 jumping in. Appreciate you, my friend. Good to see you, by the way. Unbelievable. This game took place. No type of consistency. And it's painfully obvious a huge slap in the face to this franchise. I'm lost for words. And then from JL Avenger in paradise down in Costa Rica. Appreciate you, my friend. He says, all BS today, indeed. That's simply BS. Not to blame on Shermer or the team. Guts and credit to the team. A mile high salute, guys. A bad joke today. Greetings from Costa Rica. So, yeah, I mean, Zach, let's just talk a little bit here, just to, to shift gears for a second, about Kendall Hinton. It went about what I expected to see. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll say this, though. Based on the very limited amount of tape I've watched on Hinton as a quarterback at Wake Forest, I did expect him to have a little bit better arm than what we saw, but he only attempted nine passes, but they were each woefully off the mark. I can think of maybe two of the nine that were actually catchable balls, one in which the Saints' DB made a good play. The other one was caught by Noah Fant for 13 yards. Well, that's what happens. He doesn't have a practice. He has 24 hours to go from playing receiver on the practice squad to playing quarterback against the Saints defense. I I blame Hinton for literally 0% of this game. I wasn't expecting anything. If he completed a pass, I'd be happy. It's the NFL's fault. And, Chad, let me ask you a question. How come I haven't heard of any other team's cafeteria security footage? What is that about? I have not heard to that level of detail with any other team, including teams like the Titans and the Patriots that blatantly broke the protocols and the Ravens. I haven't heard security footage from them. Why are there sleuths in the Broncos building and no other building? That's what I want to know. It seems like it's a little bit of a a coup to me. Well, I'll bring up something here. Um, I'll pull it up the the next time. Let me, let me find it here and then I'll pull it up next time we get a chance. But Oh, here we go. Eddie Vasquez, good to see you, my dog, and good to connect with you on Twitter. This is one of our Super Chat superstars that said, you know what? I am one of those cats that want to keep the conversation going outside of these live streams. I'm reading the content. I'm creating a Twitter account. I'm connecting with the football priests on social media. It's good to have you, Eddie. He says, honestly, I don't even know what to say. LOL. Then he's got a little emoji with hands in the air, right? Y'all are always here when we need you. Thanks, Chad and Zach. Hashtag Hit that like button in Denver Broncos for life. I know, man, it's seriously a loss. It really is a loss for words. That's It's just indignation. But in this case, Zach, I'm going to say righteous indignation because, again, if a little kid or teenager or a 20-something-year-old first-time offender gets popped stealing Laffy Taffy, are you, when that kid gets made an example of uh, with capital punishment, are you going to be like, well, he did steal the Laffy Taffy, you know? Where are we living in Stalin, Russia? Like, what? Are, <laughs> what is this? This game could have and should have been rescheduled for Tuesday. I get it that the Saints have basically already rolled into town. They'd already flown in. Big whoop. You put them up in a hotel. You provide them a field to practice on for a few days. You play the game Tuesday. Chad, in more ways than one, and I'll keep it here, we're really living in 1984. We're living in some George Orwell novel where it's things are forced against you and you have to comply or, or else you're ostracized and – I just, I, I can't believe, and I, I'm with Eddie, I can't believe this game actually happened. I thought it was a bad joke. I thought it was a bad dream. And for the NFL to go on with that charade speaks volumes about how they really don't care about the product on the field or the Broncos specifically. This is from Andrew Mason uh, earlier today on Twitter, and he is pointing out, you talk about the security cam footage, the pulling the mask down to take a bite, very negligible violations in terms of the mask protocols. This is Andrew Mason, quote, and remember the Titans were caught on film violating protocols with players gathering while they were shut down. They got a slap on the wrist and were given the courtesy of multiple delays. 
why did the Broncos not get a similar courtesy? And what adds even more fuel to that, that fire, Zach, is the fact that the Broncos played ball with the NFL. When the NFL in week five chose to first delay Broncos Patriots, then in fact, they, they delayed it twice. If I'm not mistaken, they delayed the Sunday game. Then they kicked it to Monday. Then they rescheduled it to week six. Meanwhile, that happened at the 11th hour. The Broncos had prepared all week long like it was a game week. Then they were told, hey, guess what? That was your bye week that you just practiced every single day. It was a regular work week. That was your bye. Week six is when you're going to actually pay, play the Patriots. Not only did that happen, but then they had three additional games rescheduled on their on their schedule, and the Broncos went along with it. Now, Zach, we don't know perfectly exactly how willing the Broncos were through all that, but all we can say is even if the Broncos screamed – Kicking and screaming through the whole thing, John I was like, no, we're not down for that. And the NFL just said, no, this is what we're doing. The NFL didn't even take that into consideration here. They didn't even take into consideration, hey, man, the Broncos already bend over backwards for the betterment of the league. As we mollified, placated, accommodated Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, that gave them no cachet in the eyes of Roger Goodell, who, again, has completely beclowned himself. And this is one I don't think he's going to be able to live down because it's not just Broncos country that is pissed off about this. This is the entire NFL world at large, all recognize the injustice and just sheer football sin that occurred today. I I was going to say, I don't blame any Broncos fan for being outraged or angry. You should be completely furious about the result of today's game. In fact, you should create a GoFundMe or some sort of a petition to send to Goodell that he owes the Broncos an apology to make them go through with this game, to make them play and to put themselves in a position to be embarrassed at home, even with no fans to, against one of the best teams in the NFL. They weren't even playing a, a crappy team, Chad. They were playing a Super Bowl favorite in the Saints without a quarterback. If you think of that logically, it's insane. It really is. It boggles the mind. Discount audio and wheels, DA dub. We know him as Tony out there in LA. He says, What's up, fellas? You know, if Pat was still with us, this would have never happened. Talking about Pat Bowen. On to the next week. Go Broncos. P.S. Broncos QBs, keep your mask on. You know, again, I think it would have helped maybe on the back end of things. It it might have been the difference in terms of getting this team over the hump. But it's not like John Elway and Joe Ellis have zero pull with the league. John Elway's on the competition committee, uh, committee. He is the president of football operations, which I understand. It's a far cry. Being an executive is a far cry from being the owner. But it's not as if the Broncos are some, you know, stepchild in the basement has no sway or influence on the league. This is a team that as recently as 2015 hoisted the Lombardi Trophy, had one of the most winningest and storied, uh, storied franchises in NFL history, just getting treated like trash and made an example of in the most evident, um, ham-handed, obvious, transparent way. I mean, this was just ugly. And to answer the previous question, why the Broncos don't get the same treatment as the Titans is because they haven't been to the playoffs. They weren't in the title game last year. They don't have even a Tannehill at quarterback. They don't really have a Derrick Henry. They don't have a Mike Vrabel on their coaching staff. If they were a relevant team like the Ravens or like the Titans or like the Patriots, they would have gotten the same accommodation. But because of the Broncos, they were saying, F you guys, we don't care. You want to play or you want to forfeit? You got two choices. Pick one. BS. It is it is absolutely it just sickens me to be frank. Isaiah eleven twenty seven, another guy that we have recently connected with on Twitter. It's good to see you, my friend. He says, very disappointed in Sam Martin. Thoughts. You know, I'll be lying to you if I were to tell you I, I pay perfect attention to each and every punt. Let's just take a quick look here at punting. Um actually I don't have it pulled up, but I don't remember any shanks. Zach, what am I missing? Did I miss something here? Punts. All right, let me look. Broncos gross average was 47.4 compared to the Saints of 45.7. And they punted seven times, did the Broncos, to the Saints punting six times. The Saints did not play well today. Outside of their run game against a depleted Broncos defense, the Saints did not play well offensively. Defensively, it was like taking candy from a baby. That's all they punted with seven times. It felt like 700 times in that game. And, you know, I am not putting stock into any performance, any any phone from Sam Martin to Hinton to any player. It doesn't matter. This was a preseason game for the most part. There was a giant asterisk next to it. It doesn't matter. The overall theme from this game, the biggest takeaway, is the Broncos got screwed by the NFL. Nothing more. 
John Mortensen, good to see you, my friend. And over the road, truck driver, keeping that supply chain humming for the United States. Appreciate you, dog. He says, how did the NFL even consider making a team play with no QB? Fire Goodell. Amen, my friend. And again, big part of this is we're helping you exercise the demons because so many of these questions, I mean, they're rhetorical. We know the answer to these questions. The reality is a wrong was done, not just to, to the Broncos here, but to the NFL at large. And there's just no getting around it. You, we can, we can, all we can do at this stage is cry over spilt milk. But the problem here, Zach, is this, it's not like this was a game that this wasn't a decision that took place in the middle, or I should say at the beginning of a season where a team has a chance to kind of make up for it, overcome it. This, in, in essence, de facto handed the Broncos their seventh loss. And again, you can say, well, look, you know, Broncos didn't perfectly obey the protocols. They have only themselves to blame, but it's a punishment meeting crime issue here where the NFL has been over backwards for the Patriots, for the Titans, for the Bills, for the Ravens. They can't do the same thing for the Denver Broncos. Let me grab that one there from, uh, from uh, who was it? Yeah, from Malachi. Good to see you, Malachi. I've never hated the NFL more. Goodell should be ashamed. The Pats, the Ravens, the Titans all got their games pushed. This was ridiculous. You know, the previous question said, why did this happen? And, you know, screw Goodell. The, the, you answered your own question. I believe it was John who asked that. It's all Roger Goodell. The guy has been the biggest clown. That's why Barstool Sports literally has a picture of Goodell in a clown, in a clown, you know, uniform. That's what he is. That's who he is. Of all the major commissioners, of all the major sports, he is by far the worst. And it's just been his case. He's done nothing since taking over for Tagliabue back in the day to further the game. The game has grown because it's that popular. He's had nothing to do with it. He's made it worse incrementally. But among his blights, Chad, among his mistakes on his resume, this is definitely up there. And glaring, highlighter, red marker, underline, this is his biggest, I think, one of his biggest errors as NFL commissioner going through with this game. No doubt about it. Excuse me. No doubt about it at all. <clears throat> Dang, these frogs in my throat today. Tom El Greco jumping in. Good to see you, my friend. Really appreciate the super chat up there. North of the 49th parallel, he says, I feel sorry for the players. It's totally a sad day, NFL. It really is. It's, it's, we're scratching our heads still. And I, I mean, this, a lot of this podcast, the way it's going to shake out is us just venting over the ridiculousness of this day's act. You know, the players still got paid, though. What do the fans get? You know, what do the media get for watching that? I mean, it's it's unfortunate for all involved. I do feel bad for the Broncos. De- <laughs> it's a funny comment. I do feel bad for the Broncos defense. I feel bad for everyone involved. Uh, I feel bad for Drew Locke. Again, missing out on valuable reps, a valuable game experience, and a potential upset of the Saints. They weren't coming off blowout loss, Chad. You, they were coming off a truly dominant win against Miami, looking to keep that momentum going forward. The NFL says, you know what? No, we're going to make an example out of you. You can't have a quarterback playing tomorrow's game. You can't have a quarterback. That's literally insane. Duke, with the great super chat and a very funny, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, uh, throw that back up real quick, John, and then we'll we'll take care of this great sponsor sports betting from Duke, who is a longtime listener of this podcast. He's an MHH Mount Rushmore type of guy. (laughs) Does Goodell run Dominion as well? Anyone that follows politics, again, doesn't matter what side you're on, finds that extremely humorous. And yeah, dude, it's, we feel you. We feel you. Stop the count. (laughs) We feel you. All right, guys, we still got so much more to get to here tonight, but we also have to remind you that tonight's live stream huddle up pod is brought to you by sportsbetting.com. Right now, Broncos country gambling is legal in the state of Colorado. What makes sportsbetting.com a no-brainer for you is the following points. Number one, sharp odds, low juice. They have in-house bookmakers at sportsbetting.com. They're not a third-party provider of odds. Reduced juice, best prices. Number two, hassle-free bonuses, which you can roll over after one time. That means the bonus money is yours after you bet at one time, whereas with other sites, you got to wait till betting at five or 30 times, and then also 24-7 live customer support, and it's always a real person in the United States. But here's the kicker, gang. Right now at sportsbetting.com, you can get a 100% risk-free week of sports betting up to 1000 bucks, and it's not just one bet, but all of your bets. And here's how it works. You play for a week. If your losses exceed your winnings, at the end of the week, sportsbetting.com will cover 100% of the difference up to $1,000, and you can roll it over after one time. So 
head on over to sportsbetting.com slash mile high huddle. That's sportsbetting.com slash mile high huddle and capitalize on a risk free week of sports betting up to a thousand bucks. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. All right, Zach, back into the stream here. John, do we have uh, Malachi? I don't know if you've if you've got Malachi's second super that he's talking about uh, the Bucks defenders. If not, I can pull it up and we can do a reverse engineer. He's got it. All right, while you're pulling that up, I want to – oh, here it is. For Malachi, thank you again, Malachi, for the for the juice and support, my friend. Zach, he says, I just wanted – I just watched a Bucks defender elbow hit Mahomes' helmet on a on a pick he threw. They called roughing the passer. Tells me the bias isn't real. I'm not sure what what that means. Zach, you're better at uh, interpreting. Uh, we didn't types. see the we didn't see the game. So a Bucks defender hit Mahomes on the helmet. They called it a personal foul. I, that's it's yeah. not biased to me. I think that's pretty legit. I think there's the big teams get the calls. The quarterbacks get the calls. The playoff teams get the calls. I think that's what he's saying. And there is some truth to that. But if a quarterback gets hit in the helmet, no matter if it's Mahomes or Drew Locke, uh, they're going to call that. All right. Um, let me grab Jess here, jumping in. And, John, by the way, Jess is at around 521 here. Appreciate you. And it's good to see you, my dog. He says, the Saints are trash. I hope they get smashed in the playoffs. Go Broncos. Also, stub your toe, NFL. Yeah, that's that's one of the surprising revelations of this game is, you know, if you watched the – um, television broadcast, and I'm sure everybody who's in this stream with us did. The Mark Schlereth and his partner there mentioned several times that the red the Saints were red hot, and it's true. What were what, they entered this? What seven winners of seven in a row? I want to say right, but they obviously are not as good as their record would suggest. Now, the one thing that's going to allow them to be a very dangerous team in the NFC, even if Drew Brees is is unable to come back in 2020 which I think he will at some point. It might be right before playoffs, but I think the reason why the Saints are going to weather that storm, Zach, the defense is freaking good. And we knew that. This was no surprise. I mean, look, today it was taking candy from a baby uh, as far as the Saints' defenses. That was no problem. They could have played this game blindfolded and still come out as the winners. But, man, that's what's going to allow them to – that's complimentary team here making up for an inexperienced and raw still quarterback taking over for Drew Brees. The Broncos, meanwhile, didn't have a quarterback, literally not one quarterback. All right, again, Aiden says, this isn't a punishment. This is just bullying. Zach, I used, I think I, I used this, um, now I'm getting turned around a little, if it was earlier on this stream or if it was our halftime stream, but it's like an MLB team being asked to play a game, play a series without a pitcher. And you go, all right, cool. Hey, Joe in, in right field and, and Billy at short, Hey, they were dang good pitchers in their day back in high school or, you know, first year in college. But in the bigs, man, it it's just night and day. So Hinton, God bless him for making the effort and do and really trying to 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 do what his team needed him to do and getting out there. But he's just not a quarterback, dude. There's a reason Wake Forest, Demon Deacon, said, Hey man, in your junior year, red shirt, sorry, dude, you're switching positions because you're not good enough to play quarterback for us anymore, let alone in the NFL, in the middle of a season with less than 24 hours of prep. It wasn't just taking candy from a baby. It's taking candy from a corpse because the Broncos, the NFL killed whatever hope the Broncos had of winning this game by literally stripping them of a quarterback. And you know what? I wasn't that impressed with the Saints either. They had every reason to blow the Broncos out. That's why I'm not looking at the score, the stats, whatever. The Saints should have won this game. They already favored before this quarterback you know, snafu happened, but they didn't really impress me that much. Taysom Hill is not the answer for Drew Brees. He's not the successor. He really is a weak link on that team. The defense did play solid, but I'll say again, if they had lock in this game for a full four quarters and we saw the lock we saw last week, the Broncos have a chance to upset New Orleans. That's what makes me so angry about this. It's the woulda, the coulda, the shoulda. Uh, it's, you know, in hindsight, but the Broncos, if they had a, a, a quarterback, a quarterback, not just the quarterback, they actually would have had a chance in this game. That's what makes me the most angry. Naj jumping in with a very generous super. Really appreciate you, my friend. The stream has jumped in. Unless John can find it, uh, we we got to do it the old-fashioned way. we got to reverse engineer this particular super, but we really appreciate you, dog. There it is. John's on it. He says, brutal, absolutely brutal. Much credit to the players for gutting out that atrocity. What do you brothers want to see from Locke the rest of the season to prove as the starter uh, for next season? All right, so – Taking a little bit more macro view, Zach, and getting beyond today's travesty. 
What do you want to see from Locke in the remaining games? Oh, you know, I, I want to see competency, plain and simple. I just want to see a quarterback who recognizes the situation he's in, doesn't try to play hero ball, doesn't go into a shell, and just manages the game. Start with that. Manage the game. The best quarterbacks in the league, Pink Manning, arguably the best game manager ever. Tom Brady, elite game manager. People throw out game manager like they're talking about Kyle Orton or something like it's a, you know, some kind of an epithet, right? Like it's, a, it's, it's, it's it, you're clowning the quarterback to say, oh, he's a game manager. Drew Locke needs to be a game manager. And if he can master the art of being a game manager, Zach, the natural talent, all that will come to the surface. So focus on that first and, and provide some consistency. But as we talked about right before this game went off the, off the rails, John Elway earlier this week said he is excited by Drew Locke. You know what? I agree with what you said. I want to see, you know, um, consistency and I want to see, you know, I want to see competency, but I want the Broncos Drew Locke next week to come out pissed off. And I know who they're playing. I know it's an uphill battle. I know it's going to be tough. I don't care if they lose every game. I want them to stick it to the NFL so far up their rear ends, Chad, proverbially speaking. And I want the Broncos to play a pissed off brand of football where they go out this season, win or lose. No team and no commissioner, no executive can mess with them. I want them to show that they're not irrelevant, that they're not a joke, that they're not a laughing stock, that they are worthy of being considered and being accommodated like every other team, that they're not worthy of being treated to double standards. And like you mentioned, a stepchild, considering they're a legacy franchise that won a title more recently than a lot of other teams in the NFL. Goodell was quick to lose sight of that. Richard, jumping in from, I want to say Germany, right? I'm pretty sure. In uh, across the pond, proven Broncos country is not a geographic location. It is a state of being. It's wherever you are. Appreciate you, Richard. It's good to see you, my friend. He says, who was responsible for making uh, sure nobody is violating co- uh, rule, CV rules, players, coaches, or management? This game was lost before the first snap. To answer your question, it's a little bit of everything, but for the Denver Broncos, it really uh, boils down to the Bucks stopping with Vic Fangio, to be honest with you. But I really, I'm not going to blame this on Vic Fangio. These players drop their mask to take a bite while socially distanced. All right. Right. Unless this thing has suddenly been able to, you know, traverse farther than six feet in order to infect somebody, what's the problem? And especially if it's momentarily, it's not like I lower it, I sneeze out into the world, take a bite, and then I put my mask back on. This is. You take a bite, you put it back up, take a bite. I don't, it, it doesn't fit the crime. I mean, you're going to have to blame someone, and obviously Fangio is the coach of the team, and uh, he'll get the blame because of his mask snafu earlier this season where he didn't. He got you know, you know slapped on the wrist by the NFL, and he kind of went to the, the beekeeper, the, the visor type of mask to overcompensate for that. I don't really blame anyone. The cafeteria security footage apparently showed that they weren't, you know, following the protocols when, like you mentioned, they were distant. They took their masks down to eat. And I feel like anyone, all of us out there, we do the same thing. We wear the mask, we comply, but to breathe, to eat, to do basic human functions, got to take it down for a second. Doesn't make you a leper. Doesn't mean you're, you're going to catch a leprosy if you take your mask down. It should be a common sense regulation by the NFL. We have a cafeteria. We have players in the cafeteria. They're going to eat in the cafeteria. Let's not make every quarterback ineligible for this game because they took their mask down for a second. It is so ridiculous. Let's grab this super chat here from Christopher DL44, longtime listener, bona fide superstar. Appreciate you, my friend. And I'm going to have to read this from the back end, but it says, no one else will say it. I will. Let me find this. Um, if we had a true owner, we would have had a stronger voice in this situation. Denver ownership situation is so bad. It's ruining NFL players' careers along with coaches. Again, I do think – I don't want to dismiss that notion at all because it, I think it did play a, something of a role, but on the back end. Because I think even if you had a an owner sitting there you know, in his, in his, right, his or her rightful spot – the NFL still was of a mind to make an example of the Denver Broncos. If it's Pat Bolin, maybe by virtue of his longstanding history in the in the league and his relationship with Goodell and the and the competition committee and everything he did to change the financial future and really help him, Jerry Jones. I mean, if you're really trying to pin laurels on the two owners that took the NFL from being just another uh, American pro sport to being the you know, 800 pound gorilla 
and a $13, $14 billion a year nut. It's Pat Bowen and it's Jerry Jones. Those are the two guys most responsible from a visionary perspective for doing that. Maybe it forestalls the, the NFL from making a play. Maybe it, 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 you know when the rubber meets the road, they reschedule it for Tuesday. I'm not convinced, but at the same time, Zach, I'm not saying that the lack of ownership clarity had nothing to do with this situation or better, better put that an actual owner might've been able to forestall this from happening. I feel like not having an owner definitely hurt them, but this is not an ownership situation. It should not come down to the fact where they may have violated loosely a protocol in the cafeteria so they can't have a quarterback playing in a game. This has been uncharted. This has never happened before. Why did it have to start with Denver? Why is there obvious bias in the media world, in the NFL world, in Denver? And you know what? If the NFL and and Goodell is running the NFL like a democracy, his decision was a dictatorship to come down on the Broncos and execute them publicly and flog them and tar and feather them and humiliate them, forcing them to play a Saints team without a quarterback. If we were, if this happened to a different team and we loosely went over this chat to open up our show or talk about it, we would be stunned at what we were saying. We would be completely incomprehensible to consider. Amen. Christian, jumping in again. Appreciate you, Doc. He says, realistically, who do you see buying the Broncos? John's the man. If, in fact, they get sold. Whoops. Uh, Bezos or Robert Smith? Um, I think Robert Smith is the leader in the clubhouse, to be honest with you, from everything I've heard. But, you know, I don't – most of my time covering the Broncos beat, I'll be frank with you, 99.9% is involved around the news of the day, analyzing what's happening today with the product on the field. I'm not one of the, I don't spend a lot of time researching the lay of the land with regard to who are some um, possible owners out there, Zach, just because I don't have time to do that. You know, things are happening right now, but to answer your question, Christian, Robert Smith is the guy to whom I've heard most often and most closely, closely connected to the Broncos. So if the NFL does step in, and really strong strong arms the Broncos uh, in 2021. In this case, between the Boland sisters, continues to drag out. Um, I could see you know Robert Smith probably is the leader in the clubhouse just because of his not only his financial wherewithal, but also his relative you know geographic location in terms of the Broncos. It won't be Peyton Manning. So can we just you know throw that out right there? Uh, Bezos, I don't see him. I know he wants to own a team, and he has his hand in many things, and he pretty much runs the world right now. I just don't see him dabbling with the Broncos. I, I, he doesn't strike me as a very vested football fan, and I think if he wants to plunk down money for a franchise, why a franchise that hasn't won a playoff game in you know five years now? So I think Robert Smith, he's a local guy. He has the money. He's familiar with the community. If there is an outside contender, I think he is it. But don't discount Brittany Bowen or Beth Bowen Wallace. The Broncos keeping this in the family. I think that's the preferred route they take, and they want to do that before they sell to an outsider. Dale. Rude jumping in again. And by the way, John, next up, as this stream is just phenomenal, just moving fast, is the Queen. We got the Queen. We got Mark Langley. We got Kevin Smith in that order. Uh, Dale says, and thank you, Dale, for the support. As always, my friend, you've just become a consistent, bona fide Super Chat superstar, and we really, really appreciate you, my friend. He says, move the game to Tuesday. Even if the NFL forces the actual quarterbacks to sit – at least it allows Denver to practice a little with the guy who had zero quarterback snaps. Such crap. Yeah, I mean, it's an injustice. It beggars belief. Like it's, if someone were to call you on the phone, let's say you've been climbing Mount Everest and completely disconnected, okay, from the from the world, and you get to the bottom of the mountain and someone calls you and says, hey, did you hear what happened and, and com- tells you this entire story, you'd think they're full of it. You'd think there's no way that the NFL did this to the Denver Broncos, especially considering how they they had – retweak things for multiple other teams and how the Broncos bent over backwards to accommodate the NFL early in the season. It's it's just mind blowing. Even for people who cover the Broncos or know the Broncos, Chad, when you called me yesterday about the Garrett Bowles news, we told we talked about the quarterback. You weren't you know, you weren't privy to the full story yet. And when I told you when I explained it, you couldn't even believe it. It's wild. I still can't believe it happened. I can't believe we're talking about this. I can't believe the NFL, a multi billion dollar corporation didn't have a better contingency for the Broncos. For every other team there is, not for the Broncos, though. That's the shameful part. Shameful indeed. The queen of MHH jumping in from the top rope, just so generous and, you know, Christy deserves so much credit and love and support 
not just from us, but from the entire community because her, her among several other superstars over the last, I'll say 14 months, man, have been instrumental in Zach and myself being able to continue to not only just focus on doing these live streams pods, but investing into it, making it better, improving the product, taking it from once or twice a week to every single day. And Christy, you're one of those members of our community that has been instrumental in that. So we love you. We appreciate you. And she says, Goodell can shove it where the sun will never shine. <laughs> and uh, take it out and do it again and then take it out and do it again. I think <laughs> that's, uh, that's a deserving punishment for old Raj. Appreciate you, Christy. Yes. Uh, Mark jumping in. Mark Langley. Everyone knows Mark Langley. And he is just a quality cat. What can I say? Also an MHH Mount, Rush, uh, Mount Rushmore member. He says, what's up, my guys? Double standard. Wow. Only winning teams get the pass. Hashtag football priest, huddle up pod, and MHH. Yeah, Zach. I mean, it's it might be a rhetorical question. I think everyone knows the answer to it, but I'm going to field it to you nevertheless. If the Broncos are, uh, instead of being four and six going into this game, they're six and four even. Just flip it a little bit. Does the NFL pull that that card the way they did? I don't think so. I really don't. Now, if you're the eight and two Saints and you get and this happens, no way in heck, no way in heck is the NFL gonna risk the the playoff equation and upsetting the apple cart with regard to who deserves to be in the playoffs. Exactly, and that's why money. It's the same reason why they didn't cancel the Thanksgiving game. Because look at the look at the matchup, Chad. It's the Ra- Ravens versus the Steelers, two AFC contenders, two division rivals. If this was a six and four versus an eight and two game today, it would have been moved to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday morning, whatever. The NFL would have done something to make this a more uh, <laughs> realistic matchup and to draw more eyes to this. When they said the Broncos can't have any quarterbacks, that pretty much meant they're not going to make any revenue money. No one's going to watch this game. And you know what that says to me? They don't care about money. They don't care about the Broncos to that extent where they're willing to sacrifice money just in terms of making an example out of something like a mask. It's so stupid. But, you know, competition is sacrosanct. You know, an equal and level playing field, sacrosanct in the NFL. We will bend over backwards if you're a plus 500 team and you have a proven quarterback. That's what we'll do. If you're the Denver Broncos and you're four and six, struggling to fight your way back in the AFC playoff picture, and you've got a young quarterback still kind of finding his way yet to really arrive on the scene, sorry, you're SOL. Kevin Smith jumping in with a super chat, and it's good to see you, Kevin. And I don't want to, you know, say anything that is um, – taken away from your privacy, but Kevin recently had a a loss, a death in his family and our prayers and thoughts have gone out to you, my friend. And as you know, on, on social media, we've reached out and uh, supported you. So this man needs some prayers, some thoughts, some support from the community. So give it to him. We love him. Appreciate you, Kevin. He says, anyone who says that Goodell isn't biased against the Broncos after this travesty is delusional. Yeah. I mean, even if it's not a bias, you know, it's simply dismissive, right? It's completely dismissing the Denver Broncos. If it's not bias, it's incompetency. To, to have a game where there's no quarterback playing, you have to play a receiver playing quarterback against one of the best teams in the NFL. I don't care about records. I, I really don't care about revenue. It's incompetency. It's, it's ineptitude. And Goodell showed us who he is years ago. And now I think a lot of Broncos fans especially are starting to believe the image that he's conveying. All right, guys, we have just crossed the one hour mark. So we got to rapid fire these remaining super chats and then we'll dip on out of here for tonight because there's a lot of content. We still need to get up at milehighhuddle.com covering the aftermath of this game. We need to see what Vic Fangio had to say, all the players and whatnot. You know, we haven't had a chance to hear from anybody on this topic since this all happened because the news dropped literally right after the Broncos finished their their media availability on Saturday. So I can't wait to hear it. J-Lo jumping in. Good to see you, my friend. Appreciate the super chat. He says, much like the weather here in the PNW, gloomy day for the Broncos. Got to hold our heads up. Karma will find its way back around. I hope that's true, Zach. Right now it looks like karma is definitely – Broncos aggrieved someone in the football god pantheon (laughs) because not only did they just get a a, a, – um, they might as well forfeited this game. They they gave up a, another loss, but now you got Philip Lindsay hurt and Bryce Callahan. 
fingers crossed right now, I'm touching wood. It's a foot injury, Zach. Mm, yeah, that's that's the scary part about it. We all know that he missed last season because of the foot. And, you know, we're talking about karma. I don't know who the Broncos pissed off in, in the football universe, Chad, but the entire year from CV hitting Von Miller, losing Cortland Sutton, then, then the injury to Von Miller, then losing your quarterback and all these different things they had to go through this year. Um, it's not been Denver's year. We can all hope that 2021 maybe will be, but this was just, it wasn't it. DH3, appreciate you again, my friend. He says, also, how about the Saints celebrating on defense as if they were shutting down the greatest show on turf? I hope they lose first round of the playoffs. I mean, that's just NFL intensity, right? Um, machismo, whatever you want to call it. That's just guys out there being guys. Because, look, the Broncos might not have had their quarterback, but – the offensive linemen, you know, they were moving guys. They were doing their thing. They were hitting, popping, doing their thing. And so in the heat of battle, man, that's – it's just – it comes to the surface. So I don't particularly blame them for that, Zach. Uh, also, let's grab Mark here again. Appreciate you, dog. He says, what's up, my guys? Garrett wanted to take snaps under center so bad. <laughs> All he needed was his toilet. <laughs> but he played a great game. Garrett did have the holding penalty that was not accepted, so it's not going to count against him. But in his defense, what I'll say, Zach, it came on a play blocking for a quarterback where all bets are off. You don't know where this guy's going to go. You've never blocked for him before. You haven't even had any reps with the cap. And he broke the pocket and kind of did something weird. And Bowles, you know, instead of allowing this young kid to get destroyed, it holds a little bit. Fortunately, it's not going to end up on his record, but I'm not reading into that hold at all. Still, he has done a great job this year. And I imagine the grades just off first viewing, Garrett Bowles is going to emerge from week 12 with another good grade from pro football focus, even blocking for Kendall Hinton and Royce Freeman at quarterback. Well, in terms of the last question, uh, don't get too mad about the Saints celebrating. It's the same thing when the Raiders beat the, beat the Chiefs a few weeks back. They took a victory lap around Arrowhead. It's like Chad said, it's the testosterone, it's the machismo, it's NFL players kind of just showing out and flexing after a big uh, a big victory. And the Broncos, listen, they would have done the same if they would have beat the Saints, Saints in similar situations. Garrett Bowles, he had the holding. It really wasn't his fault. He also saved a touchdown on the fumble return, so I like his effort there. Today, he earned the $17 million he's making every single year going forward, but I hope that just stays consistent. He's in very much a Pro Bowl season for old Garrett. Kenneth Booker jumping in again. Appreciate you, my dog. He says, who do you want to see as the Broncos owner? Honestly, I would want to see a Bowling stick with it. That's my first choice. But if the NFL is tired of waiting, um, I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know. I, As I mentioned earlier, there's Robert Smith. Uh, is the leader in the clubhouse, in my opinion. Does that mean that's who I want it to be? I don't know. I'm not particular. I'm not the most educated person on which billionaires out there are best suited to be the Denver Broncos next owner. My first choice is Brittany Bolin or Beth Bolin Wallace, but it's increasingly looking like Zach, that's going to probably not happen. The Bolins can't all get on the same page. They're going to have to sell. And so we'll see, man, maybe I need to research it more uh, on that front, Kenneth, as we get into 2021. You know, I'm with you. I prefer the Broncos keep it in the family, and I don't really want a non-football guy to come in, and it'd be like Dan Snyder coming in and running the Broncos. So Bezos, how much is he a football guy? Robert Smith, how much is he a football guy? Bolins, you know, Beth or Brittany, they've been around the game. Their father was Pat Bolin, so obviously they have some familiarity with the Broncos and how an NFL organization works. That's my first inclination, but the longer this drags out, Chad, you know, no news is bad news. The longer this drags out, the, the higher the likelihood that they're going to have to sell to an outside suitor, whoever that may be. Plus, both the Bolin sisters that are involved in this spat, they've worked in the NFL. Brittany worked in the NFL front right. office. She's now held an executive role as a VP with the Broncos. Beth Bolin also has worked for the Denver Broncos. I want to say they're both lawyers. So they're both educated. Uh, they're both, you know, achievers for – you know, to, to put it that way. So in a perfect world, it stays with one of them, but it's just not looking like it's going that way. Otto jumping in, a name we do not recognize on Super Chat. So welcome, welcome Otto Van Bismarck, and thank you. We appreciate you. Last time Goodell kept a quarterback from playing, we got 2016 Tom Brady. Here's to hoping Drew can channel the yes. anger to spike Goodell. 
Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Win or lose going forward over the remaining games, I want Locke to play with his hair on fire. I want the Broncos to play and make it a point to stick it up Goodell's you-know-what and to show him that the Broncos weren't worth being messed around with. They're not a joke. They're not a stepchild. They are a proud franchise that's talented and deserving of the same standards other teams get. So I'm in agreement with that with that comment. Eric, we do appreciate that super sticker, my friend, and the generosity. Make sure, and this goes out to everybody, but especially our, our Super Chat superstars, um, to – yeah, I can't quite make it out, John. Oh, I uh, – what is it? Uh, I can't – something – I can see the little guy moving, but I can't make out what it says. Just type it in. Type it in the in the DM. But, Eric, uh, reach out and connect with us on Twitter and let us know who you are so that we can <clears throat> stay connected with you, follow you, and shout you out after this particular podcast. And, by the way, from uh, – he says it's a it's a sticker that says thanks for being you. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Eric, my friend, and thank you for your support. Uh, Caleb jumping in, another name that is relatively new, at least in my estimation here, to the super chat. So thank you, my friend, uh-huh. and stick around and welcome. Saints fan here. Well, that explains it. But question: Had the Saints not signed Trevor Simeon a week ago, would the Broncos have picked him up if he was available in free agency? Probably not. But, Zach, a lot of fans – and thank you for the super, Caleb. A lot of fans were like, well, why don't the Broncos sign somebody? You know, Colin Kaepernick's out there. Here's here's who's out there. It wouldn't have mattered because guess what, gang? If you want to sign, it doesn't matter if it's a running back, quarterback, wide receiver, anybody. They got to go six days of testing negative before they can walk through the doors. They could – they were in a rock and a hard place, and the NFL chose to keep him that way. But, yeah, Trevor Simeon, his days in Denver uh, are, are over. Naj, um, jumping in again. Thanks, my friend. He says, have you bros seen this nonsense? Some outlets are reporting the Broncos may also be fined and lose a pick. Is that real or fake news? I haven't seen that myself. Um, There's no way. They can't. Punish I would somebody. be stunned, to be honest with you. More, we'll, I'll have to research that when we hop off the pod. So No we'll, double jeopardy. It can't be. No. I mean, that'd be ridiculous. That'd be ridiculous. Uh, Steve Baumgartner, Super Chat Superstar. Love you, buddy. He says, the team still has fight in them. I hope so. I think they showed that today, Zach. But at a certain point, I just worry that this was like the the straw, right, that breaks the camel's back to where they just say, look, man, to hell with 2020. All right. We're mailing it in. Let's just get to 2021. I hope not. But, man, when the league itself – if you're a player and it feels like the league itself is out to get you, maybe the flip side to that coin, Zach, is it's only more resolved to say, hey, we're in it for us. It's us against the world. Let's go. But it's also a very disincentivizing feeling to think right. that the NFL itself basically forced us into an L. I mean, that's just tough, man. And it's already a team that's listing, right? One step forward, two steps back, one step forward. And now the NFL steps in and says, up yours, Broncos. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't disagree with any of that. All right, guys, we really got to get out of here. So we'll rapid fire these. Eddie jumping in again. Love you, buddy. Thanks. Defense had a long day. Hope they can stay uh, healthy. Hope plus, I don't know, healthy, I think. Yes, we do too. And they deserve credit for how hard they fought. But at the same time, they couldn't stop the runs at. You know, Chad, to your previous point, you know, you made a really good observation there. If the NFL is saying, listen, guys, listen, Broncos, we don't think you're going to win this game. We're going to make you lose this game. Why would a player want to go sacrifice their health or their future for a game they know they can't win anyway? So if they did mail it in, I wouldn't have blamed them. But the fact that they didn't, the fact that they fought for all four quarters is a testament to the coaching staff and a testament to the will of the players. All right, guys, last one from a longtime superstar and a guy who's very helpful to MHH. He moderates for us on our Facebook group, the MHH Superfan Facebook group. If you're on Facebook, make sure you search for the MHH Denver Broncos Superfan group and come join the conversation over there. Boggan says, mile high salute to Kendall Hinton for living his dream and giving all he had in an impossible situation. Go show the kids some love on social media. I second that. Definitely yes. shout him out on on Twitter. Do we have his Twitter handle? Let me see if I can find him real quick here. Uh, Kendall into hold on, hold up here. Uh, I think this is him. Let me double check. Mm, yeah, this is him. It's Kendall Hinton. It's Kendall underscore Hinton two. Pretty sure that's him. Let me double check. 
Yeah, that's him, dude. So Kendall underscore Hinton and the number two on Twitter. Shout him out. Give him some love. It literally impossible. It's not like it'd be one thing if he had a week to prepare. He had no time at all, dude. He went from running routes on the practice squad to you're starting at quarterback against the top five Saints defense. Not allowed here. It ends up being our last one. Appreciate you. He says, I've seen something that said the NFL didn't postpone the game because there needs to be an outbreak within the team. What do you guys think of this? There needs to be an outbreak? The Ravens? I mean, it even doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. The, the Ravens full on have a, are, have are presiding roster. over an outbreak. Yeah, half the roster is on the CV list, yet they've pushed the game back twice to accommodate that matchup, again, because it's the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, and they're in the playoff hunt facing a playoff team. If the situation was the same for the Broncos, they would have gotten the same treatment, but they didn't, and uh, we saw the results today. All right, guys. Uh, it looks like I need to get someone else to help us out on moderation because John gets his, his hands full, and we're, we're getting some complaints. And by the way, thank you for that last Super Chat, Eric. Some complaints. I'm looking here in this in the chat stream. Someone, I don't know. A lot of Saints also, trolls tonight. Maybe maybe it's Saints trolls, but uh, either way, guys, uh, guys, we uh, we got to get out of here for tonight. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Hopefully, we helped you exercise some demons. We had to exercise some demons of our of our own yeah. because this was just a travesty, an embarrassment, a, a vast miscarriage of justice. And Roger Goodell, I'll say it again, has beclowned himself. And I wish the Broncos had recourse. I wish the Broncos there was something the Broncos could do. But it's almost like they're in a situation now, Zach, you mentioned, hey, maybe they release the footage and but just put it out on Front Street, make the NFL look bad. But at the same time, what good is that going to do? The, the milk is spilt. It's in the books. It's only going to carry it out and, and drag it out instead of on to the next opponent and focusing on the future. If I'm going down there, I'm going down taking someone with me. I'm not going to let them get away with it if I did nothing wrong and I'm still punished. And the result, yeah, you're right. The result's still the same. They lost this game. It's in the books. It's done. But at least they can show they were being compliant. Goodell made a horrible decision, and they can take the onus off of them. If I'm the Broncos, I am putting out that film, assuming it's as Albright said it was, Chad. If the Broncos show they're in the clear, I I would put that out tonight and get in front of the story. All right, guys, follow the podcast on Twitter at Huddle Up Pod, the main account at Mile High Huddle. My partner, Zach Kelberman at Kelberman NFL, and myself at Chad and Jensen. Also, our producer, John K on Twitter at John K M H H. And we want to remind everybody right now go to manscaped.com, use the code Huddle, you get 25% off plus free shipping. Great gift for yourself, for the dudes out there, plus, you know, for the, for the, Girls in our community, the, the females, you might have a husband, a son, an uncle, a brother. Great Christmas gift, a great idea. It's quality, quality stuff. Manscaped.com, but remember to use that code HUDDLE to not only get the 25% off and discount uh, or uh, free shipping, but to let them know we sent you. And then also sportsbetting.com slash mile high huddle. Get your 100% risk free week of sports betting up to a thousand bucks. Zach, tomorrow night. We'll be we'll return at 6 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Eastern for the aftermath pod. We'll see what there is to navigate storyline wise between now and then. But uh, have a have a great start to to your week, man. Hopefully, you can put this behind you. We can all get past this ASAP. But man, great start to your week. I hope. Yeah, you know, you mentioned that we're ex- exercising some demons tonight as well. It's a family-friendly show, but I wanted to say some bad words tonight, Chad. It took a lot in me to keep this PG because the Broncos really did get screwed over, and I'm saying that as the PG form of the word that I want to say. They really did. It was a really awful display by the NFL making the Broncos go through this. I'm not done, though. I have much more to say on the topic. I'm going to save it for tomorrow, Chad. We can let our hair down, analyze the game, and also come back with injury updates on Philip Lindsay and Bryce Callahan. So see you guys then. 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Mountain. Guys, sorry, one last thing. We can keep the conversation going. It doesn't have to end here. Go to milehighhuddle.com, as Zach just mentioned. Tons of content coming down the pike right now. And then also follow us on Twitter. This is where the conversation can continue. So thanks again, as Zach said. I'm Chad Jensen, Zach Kelberman. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.